All right, let's get started with our first project in Alice. What I want to create today is a leapfrog game. Not an actual game, but two frogs playing leapfrog with each other. So I'm going to start with Alice. You choose File, New. You select a background and you hit OK. That starts your initial scene. The next step is to add objects to your scene. I want to work with the generic Alice models, animals, and I want to find a frog. And I think I passed right by him. There he is. Okay. So I have my frog. I drag my frog onto the stage. And I'm going to call him Frog 1 because I'm going to need two frogs and they each instance on the stage must have a unique name. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to resize him because I want him to be a bit bigger and easier to see. I'm hitting undo because I sort of skewed him out of proportion. I want to drag him from the corner so he's proportionate. Okay, I'm happy with him. There we go, he's a decent size. I'm going to rotate him. I want him to face this way. And then I'm going to add another frog to the stage. I'm going to call him Frog 2. And typically when you're naming, you can't use spaces in programming names. You usually want to have the first word start with a lowercase letter, and any additional words start with an uppercase letter. That's called camelback notation. And I want this frog to be about the same size. He doesn't need to be identical, so I'm going to resize him. Drag from the corner so he all he gets larger to get all at one way. Otherwise, you can skew him. If I were to drag straight up, see how he stretches out of shape. Command Z will undo that. I want him to stay proportionate. So I'm going to rotate him. And I'm going to move him a little bit closer to the original frog. Now you've got to be careful. Make sure you always start with your creatures completely above the ground because sometimes when you make them bigger, they actually will sort of sink into the ground. Okay, so now we have them in here and they appear to be pretty lined up. These controls are for my camera controls, so I can move the camera over, center them. I can move it over here because I want them to move across the screen. I can change the angle of the camera. And I can change the height so I can be more level with them. Get wherever I can see everything the way I want to. Play with it a little bit till I'm happy. And then I'm going to go back to where I can actually edit the code. Now by default, you have a do in order. A do in order means that it's simply going to sequentially run one task after the other. You can also drag down a do in order, which I like to do this because if I do a series of statements that I want to reuse, it makes it easy to copy. If you do something, you test it, and it works, it makes a lot of sense to copy it if you want to do it again. So in here I'm going to drag a an instance of the frog, and it is frog one. And I'm going to have him move up, and I want him to move up one meter. Now you could test at this point by hitting the run button, and there he goes. He moves up, he doesn't do anything else, because that's the only command that he has. Well, if I want him to move up, what I want him to do is move up, move over, move down. So I'm going to have the frog move forward. And we're going to try one meter, and we're going to have the frog move down, and we're going to try one meter again. And I'm probably not going to love it. Usually the key with programming in any language is to test frequently. Let's see if I'm happy with the results before I do anything else. Up, forward, down. No, that is not taking me as far as I want to go. So here I'm going to change the for move forward to we're going to give him a real number here of, let's move him three meters forward. 
it's just units. I'm saying meters because that's the way I'm thinking of it, but it really is just units. There is no true measurement here. And I'm going to try running it to see if the frog jumps up over and lands in front of the other frog. Okay, well I'm happy with that. Now the cool thing is, because programming code, once it's tested, it's reusable. You can use the Alt key, Option key on a Mac, drag the whole sequence down, and now I've got an exact copy. Well, this is going to make the frog just keep jumping. That's not exactly what I want to happen. What I want to happen is I want frog 2. So we want to change this to this frog 2. And then try it. They should be hopping over each other. They should be taking turns. Perfect. So now I have co code set up that will take the frog frog one from wherever he is, move him up one, over two, or I'm sorry, over three, down one. And it works exactly the way I want. So again, since it's tested working code, alt key, copy, and then I can do the same thing with my other frog. So now I've got frog one jumping twice and frog two jumping twice. Let's try that. That's not what I want. So it needs to teach me to read my code some more. So I played it without checking. One of the things that you should do is you should always desk check. Because if I'd actually read this, I would see that it's frog one, frog one, frog two. Well, that's not what I want. It should be frog one, frog two, frog one, frog. Well, I don't want this rather than changing it all. I can just delete the whole section and then using my alt key I can copy this frog 2 down and now I'm actually going to desk check 1 1 1 2 2 2 1 1 2 2 okay that looks like it is set up the way I want it to work Excellent. Now ideally, I want it to go a little bit further than that, so really what I want to do is I want to back up my camera angle, move them over just a bit, back up my camera, move over just a hair. Let's try it now. Excellent. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with the frogs and at this point I could keep copying these to have them move all the way across the stage which is at your actual assignment. I want you to create frogs, have them leapfrog, and I want each frog to jump at least four times. Do that. That's a very simple initial structure for programming. It shows sequential programming which you're doing a bunch of things in order. Remember with programming you always have to identify what's doing the mo motion, you're making a move, and then you're just each line is another movement and every line corresponds with the movement. Your very first basic program just teaching you how to create a really simple program in Alice.